You do have one more. But it's not going to top this. Actually, no, I should say it differently. This is going to top that. Just get ready for it, okay? We're back in New York doing some game hunting. We're back home and let's see what we got. Okay, I will go first. This first one's kind of unusual, but the guy at Video Games New York, he talked me into a good sales guy, I have to say. I picked up Yuppie Psycho Executive Edition, Elite Edition, so we even upgraded. So this is kind of a survival horror game, but I got some, it's it's so weird, I got some Leisure Suit Larry vibes from this game when I uh, when I tested it out. So I played a little bit of the intro, kind of the prologue, but very interesting game, like very different from what I thought it was going to be. So, but um, yeah, it's this is a a version that you can only get from Video Games New York, uh, yeah. and they they published this game. So I know there's been other collector's editions of this game in the past. I think Switch was kind of the primary one. I'm not 100 percent sure if a PS4 if PS4 got a, a version of it, but um, it's an older game as well because it's from 2019. I think it was like $40. I think you can get it online as well, so you can order from the store. And if you're a Switch collector, this one might be one to keep in mind and and because uh, it might become rare one day. They only did 5,000 of this one, so. And the cool part is I was actually aware of that game before we bought that one uh, just because I, I think it came came on my radar being a what psychological kind of horror type game and yeah it has like yeah survival horror you know it's, a, it's pixelated but it has a little bit kind of adventure you know point and click you pick up items and you use it but you can also argue that's like a survival horror thing as well so yeah but yeah really interesting so i'm definitely looking forward to playing more very cool my first one is for a series that i'm trying to collect all the games in that series, and that is Disgaea or Disgaea Infinite. We do not have this one yet. It's for the PSP, and this is a very different uh, Disgaea because it's not just a strategy RPG. This one is more of a story. You're playing as the Prinny or a Prinny, and you're possessing. Uh, the different famous characters from, it looks, I think it's like from Disgaea 1 through 3. And then you're trying to solve a mystery by possessing different characters, by having them do different action. And then um, there's like 13 different endings in this game. So uh, it's not what I was expecting at all for a Disgaea title, but still it's a really cool entry. And it is one that obviously we need to have in our collection because it's Disgaea. We have almost all of them. I think we maybe have just a few more left over at this point. So lately we've been trying to uh, add to our PS3 collection. And um, this is something that Xbox never got a whole lot of at least, you know, at least not the 360. This is the Tomb Raider trilogy. So it has Tomb Raider Legend, Anniversary and Underworld. Uh, I own all of these on the 360. Uh, but I figured it would be fun to start collecting for this uh, on the uh, on the PS3. So these are classic Tomb Raider games. You know, not they're not Tomb Raider one, two, and three, but they're kind of the ones that came more the Xbox, PS2, and then the 360 era. So you know, I have to admit though, you know, it's hard going back to these games after playing the newer Tomb Raider games because the newer ones are so good. These controls are a little bit awkward, but it's always fun because I grew up with. Uh, these types of games, you know, on the, I played it on PC 
originally and uh, and then I moved on to console. But they're fun games though, you know, it's great to get as a trilogy and that's it's a pretty decent price too. So, you know, but we're trying to get all like the trilogy HD remasters on the PS3 right now. So this was was great to to pick up. And this is one that's actually shrink wrapped as well, right? Uh, yeah, that was. I think it was new. Yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty right. new. Yeah. Hey, my next one is a game that I've been looking for for a while, and it is Electroplankton for the DS. This is a game that I had quite a while ago when it came out. I probably end up like trading it in at some point, and I've been looking for it. It is a bit harder to find. And we actually found this one for a really good deal for $30. And this is the game that I, if you're into music games or you want to make music in a game, this one is really cool for that. It's hard for me to really show it in the gameplay so much because you're not going to be able to hear what I'm doing. But it's just playing around with the little different electroplanktons little characters and you're making music with them manipulating them with the touch controls and it has all these different little mini games that have different sounds with each of the different mini games just very unique very cool you know i love my unique games so yeah it's one of those ones i had to have in our collection and i've been looking for it for a really long time and that one's complete it's a great copy too and it's one of the few games we got from the last game store we went to yeah you know, the one that had very little inventory on the floor but you know they let us go through what they had and what they had in boxes and yeah that was yeah awesome. and i was super happy with the price yeah all right but well, similar to my last one here so we picked up prince of persia trilogy this is probably one of my all-time favorite trilogies you know i played these on pc and then we own them on xbox as well but see the flap here but yeah <laughs> uh so we uh same thing as the tomb raider one just a trilogy xbox didn't get this uh, i believe so yeah pretty cool uh sands of time is an absolute classic and the other two are great as well but i think sands of time is the one that stands out and uh you know it spawned unfortunately only one more kind of sands of time the forgotten sands on the 360 and it was another prince of persia but yeah the these types of games are sorely missed in my opinion that we need to have more prince of persia they did a 2d side scrolling platformer recently which is supposed to be good so i'm looking forward to playing that one i was surprised with fans of time it had some really unique controls and what i expected with the defense and the jumping over the enemies to get like little sneak attacks on them so yeah wall running and then you can yeah. rewind time i don't know if we you got around to either playing, you know, until that point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was just kind of, yeah. That's... I never played the Prince of Persia game. And so I wanted to do the gameplay for this one just so I could check it out. Yeah. It was so cool. It's a lot of fun. My next one is another game kind of series that I'm trying to collect as many as I can for it. And that is Hello Kitty Cube Frenzy for the PS1. And... When I can find a Hello Kitty game that we don't have, I do try to pick it up. And uh, this is one I don't think I was quite aware of, but I saw it and it was in great condition and it's complete. So, and not too bad of a price. It was uh, $11.99, so we picked it up. When I, since I never played this one, when I did get to test it out, when we got home, it was completely different with, with, than what I was expecting. I was expecting just a, your typical like match your cube colors and you know just Tetris style kind of game. It's totally different. You're Hello Kitty and you're trying to collect the snacks or the desserts and you've got these other characters that are blocking your way and you can't get to your little dessert until you do use some of the cubes to move the level around and whatnot. It was uh it's not that it's complicated but I'll just say it's a little bit more complicated than I would expect a Hello Kitty puzzle game to be. I mean, you're going for like Hello Kitty set for any console, right? Plus you yeah. want to get the, which console has the Hello Kitty? 
Hello Kitty roller, what is it? Roller racer or roller something. Hello Kitty roller something. No, the actual console, which one? The oh, Xbox or is no, it the Dreamcast? Oh, no, Dreamcast. I want the Dreamcast. Okay. Uh, Hello Kitty Dreamcast. Yeah, that one's like a dream console for me to get. Literally dream console. Yes, it would be an absolute <laughs> Dreamcast. Yeah. Uh, yes, I definitely want to have the Hello Kitty Dreamcast. And then I also found out recently there is a Hello Kitty OG Xbox out there, but that is like so rare. I don't see that happening anytime soon. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Never say never. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my next game is, can't even see it here because of the price sticker, but it's Aragami 2. This is a stealth kind of action adventure game. Uh, I played a little bit of the first game. Uh, sadly, this company actually closed recently, so I'm glad to get this because the first Aragami game doesn't have a physical, mm. at least not on Xbox. So when I saw this, and they actually displayed this at Book Off uh, on the shelves there. So yeah, it was great to get this one. Uh, it is, yeah, very... It, it's also action-oriented, so you don't only do stealth, but it's kind of what you've seen maybe in like the Tenchu games. You know, it's uh, you can sort of like hide in the grass, right? You can shadow your way uh, on top of rooftops and everything. So, uh, yeah, this is co-op as well. So we might need to check this one out together, but very happy to have this. And I think the price was pretty comparable to what I've seen online. And this is definitely one that you don't see very often in stores, you know? So I was very happy to get this one. And uh, any stealth game in the collection, especially on Xbox, is, is a win for me. Co-op stealth game? Yes. What if I blow your cover? Well, then we both are screwed, I yep. guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the downside to it. Um, my next one here is a Nippon Ichi title that I did not have in our collection yet. So that is Poison Control. I knew about this one. I just didn't pick it up when it first came out. And that's okay because we found it now and probably for a little bit of a better price than we would have got if we picked it up when it first came out. This game, again, is another one that surprised me. I really knew nothing about the gameplay on this one. So just going into recording this gameplay was, uh, yeah, it showed me what type of game it was. It's a uh, action shooter, almost some, it's like third person, but you go into first person as well. Sometimes you are cleansing these poison patches in order to move forward in the game. And it had a little bit of like a, to me, the enemies almost remind me a little bit of Digital Devil Saga kind of a feeling, but still had that cuter kind of feel that the Nipponichi games have. So really just different kind of gameplay than what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting though, but it was cool and it was different and definitely different for Nipponichi. And that's the thing, when you sometimes get these types of titles that they bring over, doesn't mean they always made it in-house. You know, they sometimes just publish games and translate them for the U.S. And I don't know if that's this is one of them, but yeah, I can. It just it's a little bit different than their usual ones. Yeah, definitely one that you don't see very often. Yeah, so. that's exactly why. We, yeah, I wanted to make sure we picked it up because yeah, we don't see it too often. And I love collecting as many Nippon Ichi games as we can get in our collection. Yep, Book Off was definitely good for that. I will say. The next one I have here we got from Video Games New York. And the, the guy who worked there kind of pointed that out, that they have like a relationship with this publisher right here, MDM. So I think it's like Meridium Games. They also, they've also uh, published um, the many pieces of Mr. Koo, which we have. So they had that there, but we ordered that one online actually. So yeah, this is Shame Legacy. I'd never seen this one before, and it looks like it may have been a European release. I'm not sure if this is like a Spanish company, but it sounded like it was. Uh, so Shame Legacy is sort of, you could call it kind of like an Outlast clone. And when I played a little bit of it, um, voice acting leaves a lot to be desired on this one. So I, I don't think it got like great reviews, but from what I played though, I mean, the graphics were good and you know, you definitely fear for your life. You know, you're, <laughs> you're in this village or like a cult and I'm not quite sure what's going on yet, but if you played Outlast, it's going to be similar gameplay with a little bit of stealth, some running, you're hiding in, you know, outhouses and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so definitely to be expected, but I might check this one out for October, you know, and maybe we'll do some gameplay of it, uh, you know, some in-depth gameplay. We should. 
My next one is for the PS2. This is actually one of the first titles I played on the PS2, but we just didn't have it in our library. That's Okage Shadow King. This uh, came out, I believe, in like 2001. And I would just, I remember this being one of the first PS2 games that I ever played. And I wanted to get it back into the collection. And playing it again just reminded me why. This almost has like a Tim Burton kind of Coraline. Uh, also, you know, this came before Psychonauts, but still reminded me of that like Psychonauts kind of character design but it's also more of an RPG and it's just a, yeah, it's a cool game to have in our collection. It's one that I've been wanting to get again and great game. It looks like Nightmare Before Christmas. That's yeah, the other right. one. Yeah, I was going to say, yes, like Tim Burton. Yes, yeah, yeah. At least Coraline. the cover, I don't yeah. No, exactly. Like Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, you know, and then, but the funny thing is the character design reminded me of Psychonaut. So that's yeah. why I was like, oh, this is so unique and like, cool. It's a cool game. Well, we like Double Fine and uh, Tim Burton. Yeah. So, you know, we're covered yeah, no. there. <laughs> exactly. But just funny going back to it, because like I said, Psychonauts came out afterwards. But I was like, oh, wow. All right. This is uh, not what I remembered exactly. So my last game here, I'm not going to reveal yet what my last item is. Because I'm yeah. very excited. But my last game is Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind Game of the Year Edition. So we have the standard edition of this game. But when we saw this, I we just had to, because I'll open this actually, but it comes with like everything. It's like a map, it has like the registration cards, I don't even know what, but pristine <laughs> condition. I mean, this is like one of the best uh, uh, looking Xbox games we found, I think. So yeah, so we picked this one up um, for the collection. It's a good collection item because it has DLC on there too. But, you know, I'll be honest, this, you know, the Elder Scrolls games aren't really my type of game. So when I, like, booted this up and, you know, it's on Game Pass, so I was able to uh, play it there. And uh, the graphics are, you know, it's still the standard screen. It's not widescreen or anything, but uh, the graphics are upgraded, though. So it has, like, the FPS boost or whatever oh, it's okay. called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but it looks good, but... I mean, it has inverted controls, and I was like, oh my god, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do here, yeah. It definitely has that feel of, hey, it's a PC game that's been ported to a console and hadn't quite got the controls as good as it did in the future Elder Scroll games that came yeah. out on Xbox. So. But I'm sure this was a um, you know, incredible game when it came out, and a yeah. lot of Xbox gamers were probably, this is, you know, people talk about this all the time, and we... You know, we just had to have it, you know, just as a collectible. And uh, like I said, we have the standard one, but this was a great one to add. My last one is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Deluxe Edition. I was so bummed out that I just, I forgot to pre-order this one. I forgot to get it day one when it came out because we didn't have a PS5 yet. And we are really big about collecting uh, steel books and I have the first steel book and wanted to make sure that we got this version because I wanted to make sure we got this steel book in our collection. And yeah, we found, we found it. And funny enough, uh, whoever traded this in to uh, book off, it was brand new. Like this game uh, was shrink wrapped. So I don't know who does that with their games, but to just buy it and then not even open it i don't know what they wanted out of it this soundtrack is also sealed so i guess they wanted to look at the art book and then they just said not for me i played final fantasy 7 uh you know the first one that was remade on the ps4 I played that all the way through, and uh, this is actually the main reason I wanted to get a PS5, was to continue that game on the PS5 with Rebirth. And it was so cool to boot this up, and I knew this was gonna happen, but I always love it when you see that they're going to allow you to carry over your save data from the first game, and you get to carry that into the second game. Also, you get some cool uh, like DLC that comes with it as well, like a little thank you for playing our first game. So, yeah, I just I, I you know I'm excited to play this one. This is one I'll definitely be jumping right into 
right away because I want to keep playing the story. And you get to play this one on PS5 instead of PS4, right? That is true. And so it's going to look even better than the first one. Yeah, awesome. I guess I'm rounding it off unless I'm missing something here. No, you get to do the grand finale. I get to do the most exciting pickup we did. Uh, yes. So we mentioned many times we went to Japan. And I saw this item on the very last day. And I really wanted it, but we didn't have any room in our suitcase. No room. It was so sad. And also, it was a little bit more expensive than this one. So, yeah, it's, it's actually one of my favorite indie games, honestly. So this is a 6 from uh, Little Nightmares uh, Nindroid. Mm -hmm, nice. And it's a little bit rattly. It just has the stand that's a little bit loose. But similar to what you were saying there is that someone literally just opened this once and mm -hmm. then just sold it off but it no all the parts and pieces in yeah. there i mean it even has the little gnome with the sausage which is uh, that was the selling <laughs> so point funny. for me when i saw the little gnome with the sausage i was like we're getting this yeah <laughs> and it has the key and yeah i mean this is like i don't have a lot of nindroids in the collection but as you know i had to have this one mm -hmm. so you know little nightmares as i said is one of the best indie games i played i think it's really good and uh, the second one is actually the best one, you know, and the first one is obviously uh, the, the set the standard for it, you yeah. know, but the uh, but second one is, is really good, but I can't wait for the third one. That's all I have to say, but yeah. we're, I'm so excited to have this in our collection and we'll, when we get a better game room, I'll be sure to we fully a, display this one. We have a few Nendroids to join her on the shelf, so mm -hmm. that'll be fun. I have yeah, one more. You do have one more. But it's not going to surprise. Top this. Actually, no, I should say it differently. This is going to top that. Just get ready for it, okay? It was $1, and it was at the Brooklyn <laughs> store. And it's this, uh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> you should have done that earlier, I guess, <laughs> instead of on top of the little nightmares, but yeah. But that's pretty sweet. I like that. I assume it's a bookmark, like a wee curvy I bookmark? I think so. I don't know. They had it just sitting by the I'm, cash register. I'm sure people watching are going to be like, where do you get this? I'm sure <laughs> if you have any Nintendo fans. Yeah. It's like, it was just a silly little add-on that we had to put in our order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for watching our video and checking out our pickups for our trip to New York. And check out our other video that we have right here, where we go to the Nintendo store in New York City and we cover everything that we picked up in that store. Okay, see you next time.